You can also, when you pick a top, put a coat or two of sealer or shellac. That will also help solve some of this problem. You take a good sharp knife and you just trim this off your top. Or use a razor blade. I'd like to take a minute to acknowledge the guy behind the camera. His name is Glenn LaSalle. And without him, this probably would not have ever gotten done. So, thank you very much. You'll see his name on the credits at the bottom at the back when it goes through. Okay, we're all ready to go here. Also, take notice. Two areas that can get really, really touchy on this, right here. If you do not have that perfectly smooth, that will leave a signature in the binding. Uh, this happens to be Glenn's guitar. He did a fine job. We do have a little bit of fish glue right here, which will probably not bother anything. But when I'm done, I will probably take a sander here and just knock that down. So at this point, I would like to say, here we go again. Now you probably just heard that tail tail bloopy bloopy. There's some glue marks here. We're going to have to clean off some glue to make the final pass. You also noticed I did a different technique here where I ran and kept going back and forth a couple of times. Don't expect to get the cut perfect on one pass. Allow two or three passes to clean it out as thoroughly as possible. Never, ever sand without a block. Your hand is not flat. Ain't a good thing. If we don't do this step, it will leave little bumps in your binding area and it would actually show up as a void. So we want to make sure all of the areas that we're joining up, because this is what we're doing, we are joining a joint, complex joint. We want that to be as true as possible. One more pass and we're ready for binding. Now, wood has run out. Run out means the fibers of the wood, how they're coming out of the grain. If you just grab that tape and pull, you could possibly lift some fibers. I can tell by looking at the fibers right here at the edge, I have more fibers down here than I do up there, so my fibers are heading this way. I'm going to take the tape and pull it out at an angle. 
And if you can see that, I'm not just pulling it straight off. It's coming off at an angle. That way, I don't pick up fibers and that way Glenn will be happy and still talk to me and not make me look too bad on the video. And I don't just grab it and rip. Here, we're going to have to go the other way. I have a little bit of fiber here, more up here, so my run out showing that way. This is actually a pretty decent piece of wood. And the run out is not too severe. Another big advantage to having this tape on here, if you do happen to have a piece that wants to break off, you can find the piece of tape, you can find the piece where it was broke out on, so that you can have the piece back to repair it. Now I'm going to do one more pass because as I came across here that probably put a little side step in here and I'm going to now screw this all up and that will be it. As you can see, that is nice and clean, no tear outs. He did a real nice job with his binding, or his rosette, and you can see how nice and crisp these corners are. Also if you noticed, you probably can't, I do not use a downward spiral bit. A bit is a bit, and if it's dull, it's dull. Uh, I just use regular good old fashioned router bits and they work just fine. We can take a look when we put this in. How nice that fits. and how flush that is. The very little bit of work to do, once that's glued on there, a little bit of finish sanding and it'll be ready to go. And that's how the binding machine works.